It appears from this survey, gentlemen, that the people of these United States are spending two billion dollars a year on gambling. Our books do not account for a satisfactory percentage of that income. We are not expanding sufficiently, gentlemen. Every slot machine in this country, every number game, Mr. Walsh, every other racket, I intend they shall pay tribute here. Organization, gentlemen, that's the secret of industry. And those who imagine they can remain in business independently of our control must be crushed wherever we find them. But J.W., isn't that rather a large order? You interpret it correctly. An order. And if my lieutenants aren't big enough for the job... J.W., you know you can depend on us. I trust so. This campaign of expansion you will put into operation judiciously without attracting interference from the federal government. We've taken over this territory. We're putting in new machines tomorrow. Get these out. But I'm running a legitimate business. These machine owners pay me a good percentage. The percentage won't be any good to you if you're not here to collect it. This is my last visit. Get them out. That's right, J.W. Yes, we've taken over the whole west side. 5,000 machines. You want to make yourself some money on the side? How's that? You've got a good location here. You can put in the numbers game for us. Well, that's a lottery. It's against the law. What do you care? As long as you get your 10% on every ticket you sell. I don't know. I. You can tell J.W. just opened 50 new locations up top. I'll have every cigar store running a game before we're through. The DeWolf Pearl, sir. A hundred thousand is the best price I can make you. I'll take them. What the? Much obliged. Get back there and shut up. Hello. J.W.? I just talked to the insurance company. They're willing to pay 10,000 for the return of the necklace. 15. I'll see what I can do. Roberts, interest in your territory, incorporated to open a racetrack. Don't let them. Without our customary permission. Van Cleve, this is your department. Good news from K-34. K-34 is Dutch Crowley. He's already passed through St. Louis. I've arranged for him to come to you directly. Buy that money from him at the usual 10%.
Hello, Dave. Hello, Bob. Nice going, Dave. I had a hunch it was you on that plane. Why do these fools keep asking for it? So fat heads like you can keep on taking bows. So where'd you get the tip on him? Union City. I made the airport too late to grab him. You got here too soon for us to grab him. While you were dropping like the uh, gentle rain from heaven, did you ever stop to think that he could have made a target of you from the ground? <laughs> Listen, fella. When you're dangling on a parachute, you don't stop to think. You just dangle. Here's your ransom money. Anything else? Yeah, sorry, bro. Hey, look at this. Van Cleve. Never heard of him. I have, if it's the same Van Cleve. This may be the very lead the Chief's been looking for. Keep this out of the papers till we make our report. Come in. Arnold, what did you get on Van Cleve? It's a disbarred lawyer. Lately acted for someone in returning those DeWolf jewels to the insurance company for a price. Has an expensive home and plenty of money. Looks like your hunch was right, Dave. Crowley couldn't get rid of that hot money himself. Van Cleve must be the fence. Shall we bring him in? Yes. When you have proof enough for a conviction. That's not going to be easy, Elliot. But I expect you to get it. Yes, sir. All right, it's up to you. You can have anybody to work with you want to. Well, I guess Bob won't be too much of a handicap. But you'd better say it. Just a word of caution. You're not dealing with a roughneck like Crowley now. You're bucking brains. Brains that are back of every racket in this country. Remember that. Yes, sir. That's all. Bring Crowley's things into the office, Bob. Right, I'm going to take a look through the file. Crowley was a modest guy. Only three carrots. Heard the news? What? Public enemy escapes G-men. What are you talking about? There he is. So will you tell me what's on your mind, or shall I blast? If the chief's hunch is right, Crowley is on his way to Van Cleve to unload the ransom money. He was on his way. He's been slowed up considerably. He is on his way. I'm taking that money to Van Cleve. You'll never get away with it. Why not? We kept Crowley's death out of the newspapers. But what if Van Cleve knows him? What if they've done business before? You can't lose anything by trying it. Look, I've got the same chin, brown eyes. I'm five foot eleven. I'm sure. I wonder I didn't see that before. Your eyes, too close together. Criminal forehead, the moron type. In fact, you're balmy. What about it, Oscar? Well, there you are. Even Oscar has your number. Now, I know it's dangerous, Bob, but I'm taking a crack at it. It's our only chance of getting anything on Van Cleve. If he accepts the ransom money, that's all the proof we'll need. Are you in? How about it, Oscar? Well, you're crazy, Dave. But Oscar says you're pretty good company. I'm in. Smart boy, Oscar. How's the number game doing for you? No kick? Business is great. Excuse me, sir. A gentleman to see you. He didn't give his name, but said to give you this. Thank you, William. Take the gentleman into my study. I'll join him there. You'll excuse me a moment? Sure, go right ahead. I got some other tickets to check over there. There's a drink over there. Help yourself. Thanks, I was going. That's all, William. You 
Have a message for me? I'm Crowley. What can I do for you? You can stop putting on an act. You were expecting me two days ago. What held you up? Visibility. What do you care? I got it, didn't I? Here's what you were waiting for. Where's the rest of it? In my belt. You ready to buy it? Ten percent. For the chances I took? What are you doing, kidding me? Make it fifteen thousand in clean money and it's a deal. The big guy said ten. The big guy? Okay, give it to me. Where are you going? The money's in the safe. Now don't bother now, Mr. Van Cleve. I'll trouble you for the combination later. Get away from the door. What is this? You'll find that out at the Department of Justice. Close the door, come on. Over here. There's 10,000 in my safe. I'll give you the combination. You're a piker, Van Cleve. 20,000! Business been that good? Take me to Van Cleve and hurry it up. There we are. Drop it, G-Man. Drop it. Now stay where you are. Did we cut him? Yeah. Yeah, sure, Bob. We got him. You're a darn bad liar, Dave. That's your awful good company. In here, Mr. Lacey. Elliot, this is Mr. Lacey. He's new in this division. Graduate of the training school. You couldn't work with a better man than Elliot. I've been looking forward to it. Hello, Lacey. Mr. Preston's told me about you. Oh, heavy. Elliot's up against the tough assignment running down Van Cleve. Give him everything you've got. You'll take your orders from him. Yes, sir. Report to me later, Elliot. I... Well, I hope you know how I feel about it. The, the chance of working for a fellow who's really done something. The way Mr. Preston says you have. Is that all he said? Didn't he tell you about... Yes, but... That's a chance you've got to take in any war. Well, I don't think it would mean so much giving your life for your country. Maybe not, if it were your own life. But that's what I mean. Do you? You're just full of it, aren't you? Die for dear old glory. Fight the war on crime. Well, there's no flag waving this time, kid. No bands cheering you on your way. This is just a job, like any other job. And when they close you out, there's always someone waiting to step into your shoes. Oh, I see. Well, look, I, I didn't know you felt that way. I... Why don't you watch what you're doing? I'm sorry. Oh, forget it, kid. I... I didn't mean it. You're all right, kid. Make yourself at home, huh? I'll be right back. Come in. Yes, Elliot, what is it? 
Uh, that kid, Lacey, uh, he's not going to take orders from me. I don't understand. Bob Arnold took my orders against his own judgment. Now do you understand? Every war has to have lieutenants, Elliot. But don't sound that call to colors to me, Mr. Preston. That's the way I felt when I joined the service, the way that kid out there feels now. Well, I won't be responsible for a bullet in hell. Elliot! Someone else can have that job. If you want my resignation... Yeah. Come with me. Well, what do you make of it? 38 caliber. Shot by an old automatic. Want to take a look? Where'd it come from? Out of Van Cleve's back. Van Cleve? Who got him? They dumped his body out of a car into an alley. Does that mean anything to you? The big guy. Who else? When you and Arnold exposed Van Cleve, you marked him with his own gang. They knew this department had the finger on him. That ended his usefulness, so they rubbed him out. The big guy? He's the man the department wants. The brains back of a criminal organization that has its finger in every racket and every major crime in this country. Depression. Those bullets were fired by the same automatic. Oh. So the man who got Van Cleve shot Arnold. Well, Elliot, what about your resignation? You can have it, Mr. Preston. If I don't bring in your man. Good. But you're not dealing with John Gangster now. You'll have to use your wits, not your gun. Yes, sir. But I think we've got to leave. Those number game tickets we found at Van Cleve's. Doesn't it make sense to think that Van Cleve's boss would be on the inside of a $500 million a year racket? But you're not on the inside, Elliot. I will be. And I'll work through that to the big guy. No more tickets for me. I've been getting more wrong numbers than this guy in the telephone company could give me. Uh, you can't win all the time, boys. Well, all I want to do is win just once. Man, what I could do with that 600 berries. Give me a beer. What about that beer? Mr. Regan. Mr. Regan. Oh, hello, Mary. Mr. Regan, will you give me number 737 for a dollar? Hey, you're playing kind of heavy, ain't you, Mary? Mm -hmm. I just had my relief check cash. <laughs> 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 if I don't pick a winning number pretty soon, I'm going on the relief myself. <laughs> there you are, Mary. Spot me a buck, midget. A hundred and two, that's me. Say, I didn't know that you was that old. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, buddy, thanks. These mugs don't appreciate me repartee. That's French for wisecracking. There you are. Hey, what is this racket you got? Hey, this ain't no racket. This is a number game. What's the number game? Ain't you heard? Say, where have you been at? I ain't asked you any personal questions, have I? Oh, take it easy, pal. I didn't mean nothing. <laughs> Why, let me see, where were we? Oh, yeah. Well, it's a lottery. It's just like a sweepstake. Now, we pay off on the first three races every day. You bet your money on any number up to a thousand. And when you win, we pay... Six hundred to one. Now, that sounds complicated. Oh, no, it ain't. What? What you said. Here, I'll show you. Now, you see, in the first three races, you pick 860. Horses? Yeah. No, the number 860. All right. Now, look, the first horse pays $8.50. There you got your eight, ain't you? Now, the second horse pays $6.30. There you got your six. And the third horse pays 10 bucks even. And there you got your nothing. I get nothing. 
No, no. You get a cipher. Well, a cipher is nothing. No. Look, a cipher is your last number. It's a no. Oh, well, then I win. Sure. Oh, well, that's great. Thanks a lot. Now, where do I collect? Why, right over at the cafe. Hey, wait a minute. You didn't bet nothing. I was only loaning on you. Oh, that's right. Well, I am sold. Here's two dollars. Well, I earned it. Now, what number would you like? And what numbers have you got? Well, uh, would you just as soon take 860 on account? I'm all worn out. Suits me. Thanks. If you win, we pay off at the Cafe Granada. And before you ask me, that's Spanish for pomegranate. Yeah, I know. I knew all about this numbers game, too. Used to peddle tickets out west. I just wanted to see how good you were. I think I'm gonna cry. Terence Midget Regan, arrested twice for bootlegging, 1929-1930. With end of prohibition, went into the policy racket. Arrested for selling lottery tickets, 1935. Released for lack of evidence. If there's any chance at all, Mr. Stone, of getting on the inside of this numbers racket crowd, it's through Regan. I'm sure he's our man. The weak link in the chain, eh? The only one. I've been sticking close to him for a week. Right now he thinks I'm okay, but we've got to be careful about it. Do you need any men? Yes, Nash and Connors. How about me? Well, you'll get plenty of action when we're ready for it. Besides, I'm saving you for a bigger job. All right. Now, this Regan winds up his peddling rod at the planing mills. He's always there when the whistle blows at five o'clock. Now, here's how we'll operate. Mm -hmm. Give me 999, Major. 999? Yeah, that's the number. Uh, what was the lucky that's... one, too? Right. Well, you can't you win all the time. I don't want to win once in a while. I hope that's the lucky one for you, Fred. There you are. Don't you want to buy some more tickets? Hey, I missed you today. Where was you? I was looking for a job. How come? Well, the bank rolls awful low. I got to do something. I thought I might get on here. Now, is that any way to act? There I was, just beginning to like you, and you pulled something like that. Like what? Working for a living. Why, that's old-fashioned. And in a plane of mill where they pay off in sawdust. Well, they ain't hiring anyway. Well, I got to shove off. Say. Can I trail along with you? Sure. Where do you want to go? Oh, no place. Well, I'll give you a lift that far. Hop in. Gee, swell car. I picked it up in a swell neighborhood. I mean, showroom. Hold it, buddy. Fork over that roll. Hey, you can't do that. They'll put me on a spot. You're already on a spot. Come on, get up. Now beat it, you two mugs, before I lose my temper. Gee. Thanks, pal. You saved my life. Uh -huh. Those guys didn't have much on the ball for stick-up men. Ah, <laughs> uh, they were a couple of punks. That's the trouble with them amateurs. Half the time, they don't make sure that there's an honest person that they're bumping off. <laughs> Here. You all right now? Sure. Say, fella, you're dynamite when you get into action. <laughs> and I ain't the kind of forget. From now on, you and I is going to be elephants. Well, you know what I mean. An elephant never forgets. <laughs> Why, I do anything for you, anything. Why, I'll, I'll, I'll buy you a drink at the Cafe Granada. Come on. I need one myself. My nerves are shot. Turn in this dough, Palsy. Order yourself a drink. I'll be with you in a minute. Hello, Maxie. Hi, Major. 
Climax, Hello, Tommy. Say, do you take the same interest in everyone's personal life? Or is it just me you're curious about? I beg your pardon. No harm done. It's a little paint off the fender. <laughs> well, I was heading for this chair. Me too. Congested district, this. You ought to make it a one-way stool. Shall we try again? Sure. Only this time, no cheating. On your mark, go. <laughs> Uh, would you, uh, could I... I'd rather not say offhand. <laughs> uh, I mean, may I buy you a drink? Bribery. But I'll have a glass of orange juice. Now, one old-fashioned. Uh, and a glass of orange juice for the lady. You with anybody? Neither with them nor against them. I work here. Work here? <laughs> hey, do you two know each other? Almost well enough to speak to, do you? Why, him and I are buddies, old palsies. Better head for the storm cellar, mister. We're about to be introduced. It's always darkest before dawn. Now, will you two stop talking while I get you introduced? Maxine, let me present... Uh, uh, what's your name? Duke. Duke? Duke of what? Nothing, that's my name, Duke Turner. Oh, for a moment, I thought you was royalty. <laughs> Glad to meet you, Duke. I'm plain folks, too. Wrong. You're nice people. Say, when it comes to that, I'm a couple of good-looking guys myself. It's all clean fun, but I've got work to do. So long, Duke. Bump in again sometime. Around here. Oh, she's the bookkeeper for the number game. She ain't been around very long. When I saw her, I knew it was love at first sight. She's got you down, huh? And I wasn't the only one. We all got a nosedive, but she won't give any of us a tumble. Say, come here. What's your racket? You've been around. You know all the answers. What are you at? Anything right now. You see, I haven't been out of college very long. Oh, I get you. Depends. What nobody knows won't hurt him. Say, you've done me a great favor. Maybe I can get your job set of numbers. I'll speak to the boss. Come on. What are you doing in here? Well, the boss just came in. He's in a hurry to get the low number, so I thought I'd work it out for him. Oh, no, no, no. Not that way. Go on, I'll bring it in to you. Come in. Is the boss in? Yeah, he is. We got important business. Come on, Duke. Here you are. Have it? Of course, 812. Good evening. What are you doing up here? Lady, I wonder if I could You're interest you in... You're not doing business, Howard. <laughs> you can't come in here. Well, you can't say can't to a good salesman. Whatever you're selling, I have some. Hey, Duke! Who is that guy? Oh, him? Oh, he's just a full of personality man. When she throws him out, just tell him to wait. Come in. What do you want? Well, uh, I know a guy needs a job. I know a million. Yeah, but this is the right guy, Chief. I've known him for years. Will you get out of here? I've got a lot on my mind. But this guy saved my life. That's one reason I wouldn't hire him. Oh, but you don't get me, Chief. It's Duke Turner, my best pal. Get out of here. All right. Only employees allowed in here. Oh, that's all right. Midget's going to get me a job. Well, maybe you could be my assistant. Well, from the looks of this, you could use a bright boy. Please put that down. Suppose I show you how to put it down. What? Uh, what you're trying to find out. The number between one and a thousand that carries the fewest bets. How do you know what my job is? Midget told me. And if this is your method, I don't see how you hold it. Really? Maybe you could improve on it. Take a look. Yeah, keep your mind on this.
There. 812. Is that correct? Yeah, but well, what is all this? What's the idea? Who are you? He's marvelous with figures, Mr. Walsh. Why, he's done in two minutes, but it generally takes me two hours. With his system, we could save a lot of time. Can you beat it? This is the guy I was telling you about. Now, ain't this a small oil? Go into my office. Sure. I'm taking that plane to Chicago in the morning, Maxie. Want to go along? Certainly. I always enjoy myself with Mrs. Walsh. Mm, Mrs. Walsh isn't going. No, really, Miss Walsh? I'm scared. Of me? Oh, no, of aeroplanes. You see, when I was a tiny baby, I fell out of my high chair. Yeah? Yeah. And it gave me aerophobia. I simply can't take it. I can only give it. Yeah. Not you. Go ahead. What's your name? They call me the Duke. But if you want to check up, you'll find most of the boys know Pat Turner. Where did you learn numbers? Wall Street. On the level? Yeah. Till I learned to figure a little too fast. They gave me a couple of years to slow down. Have you slowed down much? No. I improved my technique while I was resting. <laughs> okay, Duke. If you can do tricks with figures, you're hired. Until I can get the lowdown on you, you can peddle a few bets. You want the job? Well, sure I want it. All right. Start with these. Honest, Maxie, it must be love. Because every time I look at you, I get sick. Oh, you're yeah, hopeless. Well, that's what you always say. I guess there's reasons why you won't be my girl. I can think of at least one. But can I take you to a picture show? On your way, slug. I've got a date with Maxie myself, haven't I, Maxie? Sorry, Lefty, I'm dated up. Who's the guy? Why, um... All set, Bridget. I'm a working man. Didn't I tell you all I had to do was say the word? Sure. You was a cinch with me pulling for you. Who are you? Oh, uh... This here is Lefty Tate. I uh, meet the Duke Turner, an old pal of mine. An old pal, eh? Where'd I meet you before? Well, I don't know. You ever been to college? <laughs> sure, sure. Leavenworth. <laughs> no, I'm a Quentin man. No, that wasn't where I met you. Sorry? Now I know who you are. Don't you remember? No, I'm afraid not. That time on the 20th century when you won 200 bucks for me playing poker? Uh, I guess you got the wrong guy. Yeah, I guess I have. Yeah, I guess you remind me of somebody else. Now that's settled, how about hurrying up? What? He's taken you. Like Grant took Richmond. I'll see you later. Who's Richmond? Say, what's that guy got that I haven't got? Go on, look in the mirror. That's right. Pat Turner. They call him the Duke. Yes. I want his full record. Now take your time and get me the right lowdown. Pat. Hello, Lefty. I was talking to the big guy a while ago. He said you were bringing those reports over to me. Yeah. That Duke, huh? Well, what do you know about him? I know a lot more if if I could just remember where I heard that voice before. Thanks for getting me out of that. The major's harmless, but I don't like Lefty. Particular, huh? Not very. I like you. And it's that I'm breaking training. I have to sidestep the men around here. The penalty of beauty. You think I'm beautiful? No. You've got a funny face and you're too darn fresh. Ah, I'm making headway. 
Taxi. I'm not going anywhere with you. That's what you think. Now, I warn you, if you get into that cab, you'll pay for it. Okay, I'll take you along for ballast. <laughs> I don't want to embarrass you, but I'm going home. I'm not taking you anywhere. I assure you my intention is strictly honorable. <laughs> well, you win, funny face. Then you're not going to scream. <laughs> well, your spaghetti place on 32nd. Uh, now that I've got this job, maybe you can tip me off, you know, put me onto the rope. Sure. You get into difficulty, I'll save you. For myself. Bookkeeper. Says she's new there. Oh, what's her name? Maxine Travers. I don't know just how closely she's tied up with them, but you better see what you can pick up on it. Uh, that's for two. Uh, yes. The gentleman will be here in a moment. Yes, sir. Right here, sir. Hello. What are we having? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll have to ask you to leave. You see, I'm expecting a gentleman. Having guests, then. Huh? Why wasn't I informed? Waiter, I'm afraid this gentleman's made a mistake. I'm sorry, sir. Uh, don't be sorry. He works hard enough without taking on the misery of a lot of people. Did she any objection? Who? The girl you just found. Well, that wasn't a girl. That was business. Don't kid me. Didn't I drag you here practically screaming? Naturally, you had to report to the head lady. There is no head lady. If the position's open, then I'll put in my application. <laughs> well, let's see. Hair, blonde. Age? Where'd you come from, Duke? You're applying for the job. I'm asking the question. Uh, how long have you worked for Walt? A few weeks. Why? Oh, I just wondered how he was to work for. The best way to find out is to stick around. Dave! Well, you won't. I haven't seen you in years. Hello, Jack. Uh-uh. Remember this one? <laughs> Say, you mustn't lie to strangers. You told me you were expecting a gentleman. Then, so, Miss Travis, Mr. Keaton, I'll get around to you later. Say, where's your band? I haven't seen you in years. The last time I saw you, you went right out of Yale into a law firm or something. You went to Yale? Did he? He was Eli's favorite scholar, my roommate, fraternity brother, and the best darn handbag. Uh-uh, quarterback. <laughs> Don't be so modest. Is that where you met the midget? <laughs> Say, you're not married to a midget. <laughs> no, he's a fellow I know. He just gave me a job. Selling number tickets. You? Well, things haven't been going so well lately, and I... I'm going to be your best customer. We're going to celebrate. Waiter, gather around. We're going to have a big party. Now, some other time, Jack. We can't stay. Of course we can. Who says so? The head lady. <laughs> Sit down, Dave. Waiter. Waiter. Davy. Davy. The next time that door comes around, you unlock it. I want you to meet my dad. Oh, how good old dad. Oh, not tonight, Jack. It's late. Oh, dad! Shh, wake him up. Oh, dad! Come, please. See? What did I tell you? He always waits up for his wayward son. It's a mother complex. <laughs> Here he is, W. My old friend Dave Elliott. I haven't seen him in years. Yale and all that. How are you, Mr. Elliott? I'm sorry, you seem to have your hands full. Oh, he's all right, sir. I just thought I, I better bring him home. I'm sorry, sir. We hadn't seen each other since college. And Jack thought it called for a celebration. <laughs> I understand. He often used to talk about you. Why haven't I met you before? Well, I guess I've lost track of the old crowd. You see, things haven't been very... Breaking badly, eh? Well, I'm hoping for a break pretty soon. You look like the sort of a chap who ought to get what he goes after. Can't do any more than try. I like that spirit. If there's anything I might do to help you, drop in sometime. Well, thank you, Mr. Keaton. I'll remember that. Good night, sir. 
Goodbye, Elliot. And that's all I want to know. Thanks for the dope. The Duke's okay. Yeah, sure, sure. It's just that I'd give a lot to know where I met that guy before. Well, it's a large world, Lefty. Yeah, I know all about that. But it's too large when you can't remember a guy who sticks in your mind like he does. So still being a gent, I says, listen, this slob is my goyle and you treat her as such. And then what happened? Well, I got hit on the head with a bottle. By that man? No, by my goyle. Oh, she was a great kid. Always clowning. That's why I'd never be a great kid for you, Midget. Oh, I'll show you what, Maxie, if you give yourself a chance. Hey, you ain't falling for the Duke. Any reason I shouldn't? No, but I'm warning you, he's a bad egg, the Duke is. Is that why he calls himself Duke Turner? Huh? He didn't go by that name at Yale. Well, you wouldn't expect him to give his right name in a place like that, would you? At Yale? Oh. I thought you said jail. I am here. Oh, sorry, I'm sitting this one out. Ask him, he'll dance with you. This is the me. Oh, for me? No, I buy him for my wife, Maria. I'm going to take him home with the $3,000 what I'm winning. You got a ticket caller for that much money? Not to me. <laughs> Giuseppe, Tommaso, Giacomelli. Oh, I can't pay out no heavy dough like that. You got to see the boss. Wait a minute. There's an Italian out here says he won 3000 bucks. Go in and tell it to the boss. Oh, see, si, see. Si. I go, I go. This is a me, Giuseppe Tommaso Giacomini, and this is a him. Let me see it. You know Pammy right away now? Sure, you got the lucky number. <laughs> Giacomelli. That's your name, eh? Oh, see, si, see, si, see. Si. How will you have this? Oh, he's no difference. <laughs> Just a salon like I get him. There you are. And no questions asked. Madonna, Santa, Santa, Grazie, Signor. I'm rich, rich. You're a good man. I don't forget to you. And I won't get you, Mr. Giacomelli. Grazie, Signor. Grazie. <laughs> Grazie. And now I go home and do my wife, Maria, and to the bambinos. Plenty bambinos. Grazie, Signor. Grazie. I'm rich. And I'm happy. The sun is shining in my heart. He's crazy. It's raining outside. You got it. Well. Oh, here your flowers. Oh, no. I buy them more. You keep them, senorina. They match the blue. What is in your eyes? Gee, that was I was trying to say. They match the blue. What's in your eyes? See, <laughs> see. Si, si. Better get a receipt, Lefty. Do we have you? You come to have a big spaghetti dinner. What's he so happy about? The blue in my eyes. Have you noticed? You'd be happy too if you'd just been paid off three grand on a numbers ticket like he has. You bet you were alive. Arriba does. Arriba does. <laughs> hey, uh, buddy, wait a minute. We, uh, we forgot to get a receipt. Oh, sure. I'll give it him. Yeah, sure. Sure you will. It'll only take a minute. They are right in there. Now, where did I get the idea you were taking me to dinner? It was me who was asking you to dinner. You see? Why don't you concentrate? I am. Going with me? No, concentrating. Oh, I got a much better way. Counting sheep puts me to sleep every time. Yeah, but look at the start you have. I've been checking up on you, Duke. I understand you left Leavenworth on the 15th after three years for a post office job. Right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. and with a few errors and corrections. It wasn't Leavenworth, it wasn't the 15th, and I don't play post office. No? No, they didn't send me up for picking daisies. Duke Turner went up on a phony bond deal. 
You're okay, Duke. I've checked up on you, and I know all about you. You mean I'm in line for some smart money? Sure, Duke. I'll talk to a friend of mine. Yeah, and while you're at it, put in a good word for me with the big guy. Did you get that receipt? Yeah, I got it. You always get a receipt, Lifty? Yeah. Always. From guys I don't trust. Uh, on your way uptown, Duke, uh, drop these off at Doug's, will you? Sure. bullet that shot that Italian was fired by the same gun that killed Arnold. That's all I wanted to know. It isn't enough. We want Lefty Tate as much as you do, but we want the big guy first. Something tells me you're gonna get him. We followed the car to the Metropolitan Building. I trailed Tate up to the 18th floor to the office of the Argentine Oil Company. Never heard of it. Nobody else ever did. Tate stayed in there about 10 minutes. When he came out, he had an old man with him. I waited till they'd gone. Had a little trouble getting into the place, but it was worth it. I found these telegrams. Code, eh? But they're not from the Argentine. They're from every big center in this country. Does that look as if the place were on the level? We'll know the answer when we decode these wires. It looks like you hit it, men. If this office is the blind, it appears to be. We found his headquarters. The big guy. And all the rest of his crowd, from Walsh right on up the line. Sooner or later, they'll show up there, and when they do, Keep your eyes open, Elliot. You're on the inside of Walsh's office if you should get a tip. In the meantime, we'll stake out this Argentine oil company. What about Lefty Tate? You can have him for yourself, Elliot. Thank you, sir. It's horrible, the whole business. What are you going to do? Call the police. They don't know he was robbed. No, wait. The police can't do anything now. They'd only raid us for running a lottery. Besides, if people want to gamble, that, that's not our fault. That's what I thought when I went to work here. That even if it was against the law, there wasn't any real harm in it. That's what he thought, too, when he bought that number ticket. Oh, Maxie. It doesn't mean anything to you that, that you might have sold him that ticket. Duke, you couldn't take a chance like that. Not after this. Oh, but Maxine, it's my job. If you're any kind of a man, you couldn't make a living gambling with people's lives. Get out of it. Get out of it now. But I can't quit now. Oh, Maxine, if I could only make you understand. I'm afraid I do. I thought there was something about you that I liked. But I've never been more wrong in my life. I thought you could amount to something if you wanted to. But you weren't like the rest of them around here. But you're no different. Maxie. Maxie. Let me have one of those. Uh, one of our specials? That's all right. Okay. Is Dave Elliott around? Uh, who is he, a customer? Better ask one of the waiters. Hello, Maxine. 
Hello, you. Hello. Thanks, Joe. I need a chaser. Say, that's not orange juice. Good. On the level. I was just about to ask Dave to give you the day off so that I could take you the razors. Why ask him? He has no claim on me. As far as I'm concerned, he's out. Let's talk it over. Yes? Oh, hello, J.W. What? Yes, I'll be there. I'm leaving in a few minutes. Yes, I'll bring those reports with me. Goodbye. Hello, Duke. You seen Lefty? No. And when he comes in, tell him they're waiting for those counterfoils uptown. He doesn't show up in an hour. Better deliver them yourself. Shall I get a receipt? Your job is selling tickets, not paying off. Oh, take it easy, Wallace. I'm just trying to show you you're wasting my talents. Say, what about that promotion you promised me? The big dough. Forgot what you said about putting in a word for me with a friend of yours? That's right, Duke. I'll do that. This morning? Maybe. It's all I wanted to know. Come, Lefty, I'll be back in about two hours. Sure. F21. Waltz just left. Good. We're ready for them. But I don't want you to take any chances rounding up Tate and the others. Don't go after Tate until I get word to you that we've got the big guy. Right. Hello, Duke. Where you been at? I've been looking for you. Hello, Major. What's on your mind? I don't let nothing get out of my mind. It interferes with my thinking. <laughs> Good morning, sir. Are they, uh... Little difficulty with the telephone. I see. Go right in, sir. Thank you. Good morning, gentlemen. I see I'm not late. What do you suppose J.W. has got on his mind calling us here this morning? I don't like it either. I'm satisfied the way things are going. Without biting off more than we can chew. What? I asked you, how many ends in Cincinnati? I'll make it Chicago. Chicago. What happened to Lefty? What do you care? Just wondering, that's all. Where's Walsh? I don't know. He had to go out. Did he leave any message for me? No. Nope. That's funny. The clerk outside said Walsh left that package of number tickets for me to deliver. I guess he wouldn't tell you, huh? I'll go along with you, Lefty. Why? Because I like your company. Any objection? No, except, uh... Except that I'm not going. Take these to Mike's pool room up town. Hey, you can come along with me, Duke. Some other time, Missy. Hey, what's the matter with my company? You trying to give a pal a run around? Last night when I asked you to go to fights with me, you pulled the line that you're going to be too busy. That's right, Midget, I was. Yeah? What was keeping him so busy? Oh, wouldn't you know it'd be a dame? <laughs> you certainly was in a hurry to get out of here into that taxi to fix you up. Can't keep a lady waiting. Maxine? So what? What time did he leave here in that taxi? Oh, around 8 o'clock. What about? Nothing. Only Maxine was still here working upstairs. Oh, cheating on her with another dame, huh? Wait till I tell her, pal. Boy, will she be glad to hear that. <laughs> All right, Duke. Just where were you last night? You don't know her. That's why I'm asking you. Sorry, Lefty, but she's not your type. Besides, I don't know her real name. Does she know yours? Never give a dame your right name, Lefty. What name did you give her? Crowley? Why, Crowley? Take his gun. What's the gag, Lefty? I don't get it. Take your time, you'll get it. The way Crowley did. 
Hey, he's nothing in my life. Just a lottery peddler who get himself in jail selling number tickets. Listen, if that's all that's worrying you, maybe I can give him a leg up. My dad has influence. Oh, he isn't worth it. That's where you're wrong. Walking out on me? Just to tell a certain guy I know, he picked a swell number. Don't go away, folks. I'll be right back. Oh, come on back, Jack. Don't bother. Who's the guy? Just a guy. I'm looking for Dave Elliott. Nobody here by that name. Oh, forget it. I'm a friend of his. Quit stalling, G-Man. I knew I met you before. You're crazy, Lenny. Let me give it to him. Jack! Why, you... He never did anything to you. This is J.W. Keaton's son. Keaton? What are you talking about? Well, get him on the couch. Now, let me speak to Mr. Keaton. It's very urgent. What? What are you... Uh... He had an accident, J.W. No, I say he had an accident. You better come right over. I'll be right over. Stick him up. Come on, get over there. Hey, what is this? You'll find out. Go on. This is Lacey, Mr. Stone. They got five of them rounded up. Well, if the big guy's one of them, he's not saying so. Dave? Yes, sir. I've done everything I can do. Jack. Jack. Who did it? A G-man who got himself in here selling number tickets. Elliot! Sure, he's been calling himself Pat Turner around here. The Duke. What he says about Jack is a lie. When Jack came in here, Lefty shot him down. Yeah, like I shot Crowley, I suppose, huh? I've been trying to place his voice for a long time. Since that night at Van Cleve's. Take care of him, Lefty. Come on, get going. Start walking. Get gone. Lacey, you cover the stairs. 
All right, I'm going to let anybody get out of here. Come on. been in on it. Where's Keaton? Who? That was him upstairs, the big guy. Now look here. Sorry, Mr. Mr. Keaton, but I can't allow you to leave. Jack! Is he? Yes. Who killed him, Dave? Lefty Tate. That's one time, Keaton, he didn't take orders from you. I'm sorry for you, Keaton. Sorry we had to catch the big guy this way. Take him along. I wanted you to quit your job. Well, Duke, will you bump in again sometime? I'm well, afraid not. I'm reporting back to Washington. You can't do this to me! Don't you know an honest guy when you meet one? I'm going to talk to my senator about this. Hey, Duke, call off this bloodhound. I'll take care of him. Go on. Yeah, didn't I tell you all I had to do was say the word to him? Huh. The judge is going to have a couple of words to say to you, Mrs. 30 days. Is that all? And what about Maxie? She's in for life. Oh. I think I'm gonna cry. 